the Renault Kyger. It joins the lineup of Toyota Urban Cruiser, Suzuki Vitara Brezza, Kia Sonnet, and in fact, it's even based on one of its rivals, which is the Nissan Magnite, built in the same factory. But now, is it as good as its rivals? I don't think it is. I'm not going to comment on the looks because I think that's obviously quite subjective. I think it does look very good, but you might not. But what I am going to comment on is the interior. And this is where subjectivity goes out the window and objectivity comes in, right? So it has all the spec that you're sort of after within this segment especially. So it's got automatic climate control, it's got wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, uh, it's got keyless start, it also has rear sensors and a rear camera. So it's got all those things. But first of all, the plastics and everything used in here just feel a little bit cheap. And I know it is a budget car, but when it is compared to its rivals, which are also budget cars, it somehow feels a little bit less than. But then there's some things that irk me. So the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is almost pointless because there's no wireless charger. So you still have to plug in your USB, otherwise your phone goes flat. So that's pointless, right? The other thing is there are no cup holders. It is the first thing I noticed when I got into this car at the launch and I made a comment and even the manufacturers didn't realize that it didn't have cup holders. But it's such an oversight. The other thing that does bother me as well is that I don't know when last I had to pull up an unlock button. I don't even know what you call it anymore. But where it makes up for everything is space-wise. It's very comfortable back there, very spacious. The boot is at 403 litres, so that's great. I put stuff in there now, prams and an and, and it's really, I can tell that it's one of the bigger of the boots. So, yay, that's an app for Kyger. So engine-wise, you get a one-litre naturally aspirated engine, or you get this, which is the one-litre turbo. I'm in the top of the range, intense model. It comes mated to an auto or manual, I'm in the auto. The only issue for me is it's not as refined as well. So when you're just idling, it's quite intrusive. The whole car has a bit of a shake. It's a bit grumbly, so that puts me off. So the draw card is priced, right? This starts at just under 200,000 Rand, but I wouldn't go for those models. I would look at the top spec models, which go for just under 270. This auto is just under 290. So it is competitively priced. But if I'm truly honest, it just doesn't match up to its rivals. 